Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're going to be talking about First Ascent, and this will be launching on Kickstarter soon. All right. Have you, dear board gamer, ever wanted to be a rock climber? You ask them, and then you looked at me. Well, you're you you're also, speaking for them right now. I, I'm speaking for you. Yeah. How, how do you, you feel You are the about voice that? of the people. I'm the voice. <laughs> uh, you know, I actually have never really thought about it. Yeah. What about you? Well, we, what about when we were watching like American Ninja Warrior? Oh my gosh! Like those people are amazing. <laughs> first, first off, and all of them. Using like, like their fingertips, like. Yes, and when you watch like their backstories and stuff, like how many of them are rock climbers? Like most of them. Like most of them, <laughs> and I'm just always amazed. But we each, we actually have in town, we have a Ninja, American a Ninja, Ninja Warrior course, yeah. yeah, which our seven year old can do more on it than we can. My favorite part about being, about watching American Ninja Warrior is sitting on the couch, like eating like Pringles and being like, they have bad form. Oh my gosh. You need to bend your elbows more. Like, go faster. You're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> like in the comfort of your like, right. chair. Yeah. <laughs> so this game is not about that. No, this is all about rock climbing. So you are trying to get to the top of this summit, uh, but also you're trying to do it in a way that is, you know, unique. It's, you're the first, you're kind of exploring this mountain for the first time. You're trying to do it in ways that no one's ever done it before. You're going to get points from a variety of different places, uh, but ultimately, the higher you get, the more points you're going you're to get as well. Um, let me show you how it looks on the table. All right, here is our board set up for First Ascent. All right, down below here, we have all of our different tiles that we're able to start off with. We have our little meeples that are our climbers. And we also have all of our ropes. These are different kind of what they call pitches. They're going to be using to climb and show the kind of the path that we've gone on throughout the game. On all these tiles, they're going to show requirements. Like for instance, this one shows that we need one purple, two red, and two green skills. They all have meanings. For instance, the red is the slab skills, the green is the face skills, purple is the uh, crack skills. And no, it's not talking about drugs, it's talking about cracks in the rocks, gosh, people. And then also we have brown symbols, which are our gear. Also, some of those cards are going, or some of these tiles are going to have requirements like water, and then also this is called psych. So, kind of being able to get psych yourself up in order to make some big climb um, and throughout the game. All the tiles are numbered, and all those numbers at the top represent victory points. So, for instance, this one has a three, therefore it's worth three victory points if you have one of your pitches on it at the end of the game. At the top of the board here, we have some more of the fours and fives. And then we're going to flip that over once one of our meeples gets all the way to the third row there. Once that happens, then we're going to kind of flip all that over and be able to see what's going on over there. I do want to point out this is the two and three player recommended board. There is another larger board they recommend for four and five players. To start the game off, we're going to get some player character abilities. These are all different kinds of characters. They have different water requirements, uh, different special abilities they're going to give us throughout the game. They're double-sided, so there's a ton of different characters that you can choose from, and they all have their own boards, special abilities, meeples, etc. We're also going to get some personal objectives. Uh, these are going to be different things that we can kind of work on throughout the game. We're going to be dealt two of them, and you're going to keep them both throughout the game. However, only one of them can actually be completed for points. And they're all going to be based off of some symbols. So this one says, um, climb three pitches in and around the Rocky Mountains. But instead of having to make you read all the small print, they just say stuff like marked with a triangle, a white triangle. So then you, all the cards, or all the tiles that have a white triangle like this one does, we know that one is in or around the Rocky Mountains and therefore would qualify for this card. So you have both cards there. You can choose one of them to kind of work towards or even work towards both, but you're only gonna get points for one of them. And the points are at the bottom right. Bunch of those to work with. Now, what we're gonna to try to do throughout the game is we're trying to get victory points through all of our different tiles that we're climbing on, through our personal objectives. We're also gonna get there's some shared objectives across the top there. There's a bunch of those tiles, we kind of shuffle those up and deal out three. And you're also gonna get a point if you make to one of these summits across the very, very, very top there. You start with a hand of five cards, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a choice. You're either going to make a climb, you're actually gonna place your meeple out there, spend the requirements, show your pitch there to show you've actually climbed there. Or what you can do is you can rest. You can say, you know what? I'm not going to go anywhere this turn. I'm going to get some resources and kind of collect up and go make it go for it the next round. If you actually take a climb, at the end of your turn, you're going to be able to draw three of these asset cards, which includes all those different skills and equipments, uh, from either the top of the deck or from the ones that are face up there. Um, 
However, if you choose to rest, what you can do is you get four assets and you get them from the portal ledges. Portal ledges are across the very top here. Those are some cards that are already sorted out by their skill type, so they're not random. You know you're gonna get that skill type based off the cards or what pile they're in. You can also choose to gain water or psych from those uh, by resting as well. So you get four assets if you do it that way or three assets if you climb. If you climb and you spend cards, those are going to go on your play personal player board, which I'll show you in a little bit, and those are going to be used towards some stats collection and kind of some bonus points or special abilities. Also, when you climb, you get one of these climbing cards. They're going to do a variety of things. They usually give you a choice, though. This one says uh, Splitter. Jam the whole way up. You're going to gain a token, but you're going to lose a water. Or your secondary choice is you can conserve your toes and find some nubs to use for feet. Gain a Psych, but lose one of your skill cards. So all these cards are gonna give you a choice like that whenever you do climbing. It's usually a trade off of trading one thing for another thing. Some of the things they can give you, however, are these summit beta tokens or these kind of these skill tokens over here as well. And those can be really helpful later on when you get into the uh, set collection side of things. So as you're climbing, things obviously need to be connected. So as you're moving up and up and up, you can go sideways as well, but you have to be in a straight line. However, when you get to the ledge, the ledge is considered to be touching uh, every, you know, the bottom part of the ledge, all those spots right there are considered to be touching all the bottom part of the top half. And basically it's because they're, they're saying there's a path there across the middle and you can walk there easily and kind of then start, you know, over then from there. But like I mentioned earlier, once one person gets to that third row, all the top row flips over like this. Just like that. I think thematically it has to do with maybe you don't, aren't able to see your full path until you get there. Um, but basically all those top tiles are a little bit more, a little bit harder to do. They're, little, they're worth more points as well though, but they're gonna require more of those skills. Now remember from there, let's say we went up that path, ever, all these cards are connected. So from there we can keep on going up and up and up, do something like that. If for some reason you want to take a risk on a tile, let's say you're missing one of the things, let's say you wanted to go on this one right here, but you only had one of those purple skills, you can roll the dice. Basically it's going to say three different results. Either a check mark, which means, hey, you made it, or that minus two card symbols, and that's saying that you have to give two cards from your hand or from your board to another player. And let's see, that symbol right there means you have to give a psych and you have to give a card to another player. So basically, no matter what, it's gonna provide that resource for you, but it might cost you some things based off whatever the die result says. All right, here's an example of a player board. So as we're going up these different uh, tiles, we're playing the cards right onto the board like this. So let's see, we did something like that. Maybe we did some more gear. I don't know, whatever the requirement was. Now. There's going to be all these symbols across the bottom there on some of these tiles. If you ever get a set of three, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to get two points. It's going to count towards the end of game score. So that can be really important to try to collect cards that match up so that way you're able to use those for points. At the end of the round, you're going to flip over all the cards that you use to kind of show that they've already been used that round. I'm doing this one hand, which is tricky. And then we're gonna keep on playing on top of those as well. But there's another aspect of the set collection as well, which has to do with which of the skills and equipments that you've played. So for instance, you can discard any three of a kind. Let's say we had three of the gear cards. We could discard those back to the asset discard pile in order to take one card from the portal ledge of our choice. So you'd know that it's gonna be a certain kind of skill because they're all kind of organized by skill type. The other way that you can use cards Let's say we spent a whole bunch of, of these green skills, of the face skills. You have them all there. What you can do is you can discard four of them, which is a whole lot, for one of these permanent skills, these earned assets. What you do is you take that one. In this case, it's a green because we used four of the greens. Now, from here on out, for the rest of the game, we have one built-in green asset, one green skill that we'll be able to use for all of our climbing. Don't forget, we also have over here, we have our water as well as our psych, and we all have our special abilities. This particular one says, uh, as an above knee amputee, you get to have, you get to have, get creative with your technique on each pitch. You may substitute one skill for a different skill card of your choice. So that gives that character some flexibility. And that's uh, all the characters have their own thing. 
once one player has played all of their pitches out on the board, uh, all those, those rope lengths like that, what's going to happen is you're going to count up all your points. And remember, your points are going to come from where the pitches are, you know, which tiles have the points on them. You're going to have points based off of your the different set collections, things over there, all those tokens that you've accumulated. You're going to have points from your personal objectives as well as the shared objectives and a point from getting to the summits. At the end of all that, whoever has the most points wins the game. This game had a ton of diversity. So when you're playing, you're playing like individual characters. And I felt like, like sometimes people just put diversity in the game because they feel like they have to, which you should. But this had purpose. So there's special abilities with all the characters as well. And it's just like, I don't know. I, I felt like there was a lot of thought put behind it. It wasn't like willy nilly putting all this, all these people on there. I just felt like there was a lot of thought behind the characters and their special ability. I liked how you needed to use all these different skills, right? There's these slab skills. There's these crack skills. There's these, uh, what's the other one? Face skills that you need to be able to have in order to get higher and higher on these more difficult challenges. And the cards represent that. You also need, you know, equipment. You can't do it off of skill alone. You're going to need some gear along the way. And plus you need to have, you know, obviously some water, some hydration, and the, this, you know, the, the, the mental capacity for it, the psych, psych. Yeah, the psych skills as well. So I liked how kind of all of that came together and you needed to spend all these different resources uh, in order to get to these higher and higher levels. Um, and I thought that was really creative and I liked how each each different challenge that you were presented with you needed a different set of skills for. Yeah. Which made, made a lot of sense, which I'm sure was true of, of rock climbing. So speaking of those skills, there is also this set collection mechanism that was with those cards. So you could do a lot of things with that after you played them. At the bottom of the, of the cards, there's like these little abilities, these little... I don't know what you want. Symbols. Have. Yeah, symbols. And if you could play a certain amount at a time, you could get points from that. You could also, as soon as you were able to play four of these skills, then all of a sudden you just had like a permanent skill. Like you had done that so many times that you now you have a permanent skill. Or sometimes you needed skills and that's just not available in the public draw pile. And so you can actually turn a set in to get to draw from a pile of stuff that you actually need. So there's a lot of different ways to use those cards. Yeah. Um, so the Venn diagram, right, of uh, the combination between where, where, where rock climbing exists and where board gaming exists, is the crossover is probably very small, right? Um, and that begs the question, what, uh, you know, would, would you think board gamers who are not rock climbers, would they enjoy this game? I think so. And yeah. the secondary question is, would rock climbers who are not board gamers enjoy this game? I think that they would love the game. One of the things that was hard for us, for Ryan, because he's the one that reads the rule books for me, was that we didn't know a lot of the terminology in the game where it would be a different term in just a normal rule book. They did have a glossary in the back, though, um, to help ease with that. But I think that using those terms would make a rock climber who's not necessarily a board gamer really dig this game. You just feel right at home. Oh, like, yeah. Reading right. all these different terminologies about, and like... They, they would get it. I think it would help them learn the game because they would understand it, and so the mechanisms and or the mechanics would just make sense to them. Yeah, I think... I mean, I think it is a little bit heavier than an entry-level game for most... for most people, but I think there's a certain cerebral quality that rock climbers have, plus the fact that it has all these tie-ins to their yeah. their individual hobby that is unique uh, that I think they would like. Board gamers, I mean, we, we're obviously in that category. Yeah. We're the board gamers that are not rock climbers. Yeah. <laughs> outside of that one time in Colorado 25 years ago. <laughs> was it that long ago? It probably was. <laughs> um, and outside of that, uh, <clears throat> I think that we, you know, we had a great time with this game because... It was so well thought out. Yeah, it was. And you are, you just, if I make sense, you're kind of progressing upwards, basically, and there's all these, you know, all this, all the symbols kind of followed, made sense, and all the... Very good iconography. And yeah. all of the different uh, objectives that you had, both the public and shared objectives, as well as your own private objectives, uh, all the symbols, all the all the things just kind of tracked, and you could kind of, like, do different creative ways. There's literally, literally and figuratively, many paths to victory. Yeah. Which we, I always look for in a game, you know, I want d interesting decisions, and there was tons of interesting decisions in this, in this game, where to go, how to go what points to go after um and you want to you know, rush the pace do you want to take a rest do you want to go after do you want to go higher what yeah. do you want to do uh and uh yeah overall i first ascent was a lot of fun for us everybody thank you so much for watching it don't forget to subscribe to us so you can see our videos as they come out you can also find us on facebook where ryan bethany board game reviews 
On Twitter, we're Ryan Bethany one and on Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. All right, you guys, this is coming to Kickstarter soon. Should be sure to keep an eye out for it, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.